What's going on there, folks? Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Either way, it is Friday here. Finally made it through the work week. Weekend is upon us, October 20th, 2023. It's about 1138 a.m. here, California time. 3.1 earthquake into the area around the Philippines, it looks like. The latest one on the uh, earthquake 3D globe. Did see some activity stretching here across the Java Trench as well overnight. Also looks like a uh, 4.9 coming in within the last 40 minutes or so. Kind of stretching up here across the plate boundary. We've been watching this a little bit here over the past few days. Most of the activity has been bunched up here across the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, and eventually it makes its way across this plate boundary northward. Looks like that's trying to uh, happen here today with that latest quake on the map. Uh, what else we got going on here across the West Coast? A little activity up into the state of Washington. Uh, looks like around Mount St. Helens once again, still having some earthquake activity. Today looks a little bit more active. So let's go ahead and check the uh, latest information here from the Volcano Hazard site. On this map here tells you all the uh, current statuses of the volcanoes at the USGS monitors. Mount St. Helens is still at green and normal. Uh, when you click on this little link here, uh, it takes you to a website uh, where you can check all sorts of cool stuff out, pending they are working, uh, such as gas, gas emissions. Uh, and we're looking at that right now. <clears throat> carbon, carbon dioxide levels look pretty minimal for now. Uh, not a huge spike on that. Uh, one key thing you'd want to keep an eye on during, during a potential volcanic eruption is the sulfur dioxide emissions. And these have been up and down. No huge spike uh, being seen on that uh, chart. I really don't see anything unusual in terms of the gas monitoring stations. Let's go ahead and check out the latest um, seismograph station here. Last 24 hours does show some earthquake activity. See these little spikes here? Those are all earthquakes. Um, some of the ones that the USGS is mentioning. Let's see if we can find those real quick. Go back over here to the Mount St. Helens station. And it looks like the largest is going to be this little 1.1 1 .1, uh, about 6 o'clock this morning or so. So about six hours or so ago, <clears throat> we've seen a little 1.1. 1 .1. It could be any of these. It could be this one right here. But it looks like there's uh, definitely a handful of uh, earthquakes here. Notice these little spikes, definitely uh, quite a few more than what's shown on the USGS map. Some of these bigger ones here could be some deeper quakes in the area. Let's go ahead and check out a nearby station just south here, HSR. Uh, does show some of these earthquakes. It looks like a little bit more here during this period. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, count, uh, I count a little bit more than what the USGS is claiming here. They're, they got about... Uh, well, 10 earthquakes, that's way up north though, but specifically around this area, eight showing up here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably double that amount. But uh, yeah, this earthquake occurring about six in the morning. This is gonna be GMT time over here. Little spikes of uh, some earthquake activity there. In the last few hours though, things look like they have calmed down slightly. So we'll continue to watch that though. At the Mount St. Helens area. <clears throat> All right, far as the rest of the movement goes out here across the states, uh, California area. Don't think we see anything major overnight. Getting a little bit of activity uh, down south here in Northern California. Most of this is uh, generally a microquake movement. Far as the 2.5 map and above, there's not a whole lot to show out here across the West Coast. So uh, most of this activity, even kicking up down here into the Southern California area is below that 2.5 threshold. Some movement outside of Riverside and also along the San Jacinto fault zone, the Anza section seeing a little bit of activity here in the last hour or so. The San Andreas fault remains quiet for now. Uh, some movement out around Stanley, Idaho. This is the Sawtooth fault system 2.4 and a 2.0 from yesterday. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's just double check Yellowstone, see what's going on here. As we look at the graphs, doesn't look like a whole lot going on um, as far as earthquake activity goes. 
Don't see a whole lot of spikes out here. Some of these other movements could be wind, could be uh, some geyser activity. But uh, as far as earthquake activity, we're really not seeing anything. One little, one little speck of a uh, mark here on this graph, that is an earthquake. You can see that showing up just barely on this Pelican Cove station as well. It's going to be this one. Uh, but really nothing being reported over here from the USGS. But that's probably underneath a 1.5 or so, but around the areas of eastern Wyoming. All right, uh, Oklahoma. What do we got going on out here in Oklahoma? Quite a bit. 14 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Uh, I believe there's some oil fields associated out here with this uh, activity. Hard to tell sometimes, though, on the uh, topography of the map of this uh, Oklahoma area. Kind of mixes in with the vegetation out here. Uh, the latest activity, where'd that go? A little bit further up north. These two earthquakes. Doesn't look like there's any specific uh, oil pumping operations out here, but you never know. This could be uh, potentially due to uh, uh, groundwater movement as well. I know Oklahoma is dealing with a little bit of drought up there, so that can have an effect on what's going on below the surface, uh, but not nothing big, just a couple small microquakes out there today. Just kind of keep an eye on that region. Uh, the eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Caribbean plate here, general movement uh, in the vicinity of the Puerto Rico Trench, but uh, just for now, some twos and threes. South America region, handful of earthquakes there. Uh, from today and yesterday, mostly fours out here across this area of the middle, or the uh, Peru-Chile Trench. You can see that showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like there's a little bit more earthquake activity than what the USGS is reporting here on the globe and uh, further up north along the area of Peru. Definitely, uh, at least looking at this graph here on this chart on this uh, Earthquake 3D globe shows more uh, elevated movement here today. Let's see, that was the activity up in, uh, let's see what we got up there. Did the USGS show this? Three-pointer out in Spanish Springs, outside of the Reno area. This has been a kind of an ongoing deal out here for a little bit. Uh, I heard they tested some type of nuclear device or something out here in Nevada. I'm not for sure exactly where that's at or if it registered any type of seismic event. Uh, but a uh, simple search there on Google will let you see that. What else we got here? The big island of Hawaii. Showing some movement around Pahala. Stretching out towards Loihi Seamount. Nothing spectacular going on out there yet. Kilauea Volcano has uh, dropped off there. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity there across the region. Uh, let's double check the area of Kilauea Volcano just to see what we got going on. As uh, far as the tilt meters go, looks like we're back to a little inflation going on here today. But an overall trend that notes this graph right here. It's been an overall trend over the past 30 days or so. Uh, we get these little dips, uh, inflation points, and then little dips of deflation. And it's an overall trend of inflation. So definitely got some magma building up below. Uh, earthquake activity, I'm surprised it hasn't kicked up overnight. Uh, let me double check the seismograph stations here, see what we have going on. Um, this act, this is a weird looking chart here. Let me pick a different one. That one doesn't look accurate. Look like there was some type of interference. Uh, but this one looks fairly well tuned as far as earthquake activity goes. There's a handful of quakes, a couple very small ones. But it looks as though uh, the seismic activity has calmed down. Although the inflation is still uh, happening below this area, that means that there's still magma uh, compacting underneath there and, and growing. So we'll continue to watch that there at Kilauea Volcano. Up into the Alaska area, mostly smaller microquakes across the region. Nothing major going on there today. And areas, uh, like I said, around the Java Trench, pretty active. We'll watch for some uh, progression of quakes up along the plate boundary. And let's see what we got here. 4.6, the latest one uh, south into the Philippine Trench, about 228 kilometers deep here. Philippine Trench. Uh, not a whole lot going on further to the southeast here. One earthquake from yesterday. Uh, look at the Earthquake 3D globe. Shows 
Looks like a 3.0 right smack dab on the plate boundary here. Still expecting some movement to pick up there in New Zealand. Uh, the latest information here from GeoNet servers that monitors the activity in New Zealand. Well, there's doesn't look like there's a whole lot of activity. There's some, you know, generally some small microquakes happening. 2.4, 56 minutes ago. They're uh, right on the plate boundary, like I mentioned. Quick glance at the Earthquake 3D drums here, or the Earthquake drums. Uh, let's see here. This is lacking data. I believe that's that Earthquake there along the Kermadec Trench um, from late last night. It's going to be that 4.6 showing up here, much further up along the plate boundary. Uh, but far as localized activity... There across New Zealand, there's a there's just not a whole lot worth mentioning out here today. It looks pretty quiet in this area. Uh, regions around the Mediterranean and uh, areas westward look pretty quiet for the most part. Some twos going on up here uh, across this area of the globe, but not a whole lot of movement happening regionally in this area. The Atlantic Ocean divergent boundaries out here look pretty quiet. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on things. Solar activity remains almost non-existent right now. We're just well below the C flare category, uh, down into the B flare class, which means that there's not a whole lot happening here for solar flare activity. Uh, overall threat right now, 60% chance for a C flare, M flare at 5, X flare, and proton events there at about 1% or less. Not a whole lot... Uh, not a whole lot popping out here on the sun right now. I don't really see anything around the eastern limb either, as far as any elevated activity. Not for sure what's going on. Could have something to do with the polar flips going on, you know, in, in progress up there. Uh, let's see here. Goodness. Yeah, we should be dipping back down here. Um from our uptick that we've experienced uh, earlier this year was pretty active, but now we're dipping back down into some uh, very minimal activity. This here is the progression line, the um, predicted, the progression of the actual uh, activity is still above the predicted amount of sunspot numbers and the SFI the same, uh, but uh, we're supposed to peak, peak out here in uh, June 2025 for solar cycle 25 it's supposed to be our maximum so i'm sure things will kick back up just a little quiet period going on right now with the sunspots and there's a couple sunspots facing the earth but they are fairly stable all right folks storm prediction center uh has a little bit of marginal risk for some severe weather across portions of georgia and north carolina uh, nothing for tornadoes. It looks like main threat's going to be a little bit of hail and some wind from uh, some of those storms that pop off out there today. Uh, thunderstorm outlook is uh, generally within that same area I just showed you with a 40% chance there. Throughout the afternoon, evening time period, uh, looks like it increases offshore. But overall, general uh, activity is minimal in the severe weather department today. Uh, watching this little tropical storm down here that's going to be shooting off a whole bunch of moisture northward into texas and oklahoma in the areas that need it the most these guys are going to get quite the drenching here uh rainfall in areas uh western oklahoma i know these guys were dry i was out there earlier this year texas and oklahoma uh doing a little storm chasing and uh yeah they got a little bit of drought they're dealing with so hopefully that puts them out of the drought Either way, it looks, looks like they got a, a pretty good soaking coming their way uh, here for the West Coast. Uh, today, well, this is going to be on Saturday into Sunday. A little bit of cooler temperatures with scattered showers out here in Northern California. Nothing big coming in. Um, but it looks like there may be a little pattern change towards the first week of November for California. It is getting into our rainy season, so... Let's not start off with a uh, a dud. This is an El Nino year. It's supposed to be a strong El Nino event. So I'm hoping that we are looking at um, uh, a decent rainfall year. Let's see here. Where'd my El Nino page go? 
Got it up here somewhere. I got so many bookmarks. I don't even really, well, I do use them. I do use a lot of them. But uh, occasionally, let me just type this in here. Let's see. Yeah, this is from September, so this that's, this has been updated. Still very warm waters out here across the uh, areas of the Pacific, and in general, the entire Pacific looks pretty warm. That could fuel some of these storms, and if you look, it's pretty much aimed here, this warm band. Uh, you know, stuff like this enhances convection in the wintertime for the West Coast, bringing with it some stronger storms, and this is pretty much lined up right here at the West Coast. So this would be interesting. And of course, the, uh, the general Pacific as a whole is very warm. Uh, so they're looking at a strong potential of an El Nino lasting through this winter uh, at 75 to 85%. That's pretty, uh, that's way up there. Uh, earlier when we were looking at this a couple months ago, it was about 20 to 30. So this continues to enhance as far as the El Nino weather pattern goes. And uh, they put this at a 75 to 85% of a strong event. Uh, but when we see these strong events, most of the time we get hit pretty hard out here across the West Coast. So that would be awesome in terms of staying out of the drought, staying away from, you know, the, uh, the drier conditions that we've dealt with for a while. So I'm looking forward to this. I'll be uh, definitely watching all these storms out here across the uh, West Coast. Hopefully, fingers crossed. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a uh, wonderful, beautiful Friday. Just going to enjoy it, I think, here on this end. Uh, seismograph stations are pretty calm for now. There's Yellowstone. Not a whole lot going on there at Lake Yellowstone. Mount St. Helens offline, surprisingly. But uh, hopefully it comes back. If not, I'll reset that and maybe get it back up. All right, folks, have a good one again. 82 degrees out here in Northern California. It's supposed to be about 92 outside of Chico, California, here where I'm at. Uh, cooler conditions coming in tomorrow with chances of rain. And hopefully we're done with the 90s for the rest of the year. Have a good one.